Money Vikings, welcome back. Money Viking Greg here. I have what I think will be a very inspirational and critical review for all of you. And it has to do with a book that changed my life over 20 years ago. And sometimes it's interesting to do a review of these books when you think back to books that made a big difference in your life. And I was fortunate enough to take the class as well of, as you can see here, the seven habits of highly effective people. For you younger folks out there in your 20s and 30s, you probably haven't heard of this book unless it's still popular. Let me know. Please make a comment to let me know if this is still something that's talked about because I have a feeling it's not talked about that often anymore. The author is a guy named Stephen Covey. He was an older, bald guy like me. He was much older than me. He died, he would have probably been in his late 80s right now, but I think he died about 10 years ago in his 70s of some kind of accident. But anyway, bottom line is he was uh, definitely an inspirational thought leader in terms of improving self-improvement. It's that whole self-improvement genre, which I think is important. You know, I think it gets made fun of a little bit, probably for good reason because we have to kind of take things with a grain of salt. But at the same time, I think it's very interesting when someone wants to improve themselves and is able to go find the resources to do that. I was introduced through my job to this book and through just kind of hanging out at Barnes & Noble back in the day when that was kind of a thing. So this guy, a little bit about the history real quick, and I'm gonna connect this to personal finance. So I'm gonna go through the seven habits and then I'm gonna to explain to you how they can help you with your true wealth journey. Because these habits help us in all aspects of life, with our relationships, with other people at work, colleagues, family, friends, and our relationship with money and personal finance as well. And I'll get into that sort of angle. That's kind of the paradigm that I'm looking at this through right now. So sit back, relax, just, you know, you can listen to this in the background. And I think it's really gonna be helpful. I really do believe in the power of these habits. I have, I'm not perfect at all, but I've tried to deploy these and use them over the course of my career and in my personal life. And I do think they make, they, they could make a big difference in someone's life to make them more quote unquote effective. Effective being, I think sort of um, the, the big picture meaning of that is just effective in terms of being a good, uh, you know, partner, a good friend, a good, parent, a good worker, effective to your own, in your own development and effective in your own life, etc. So let's get into it. Stephen Covey, the story goes that he, and you can find all kinds of videos of him on YouTube. If you check him out, just look the guy up. You'll see all kinds of talks by him. I think the story goes is that he had studied a lot of different sort of self-improvement traditions, and he decided to boil things down into seven of the habits. So the, the thing, the other thing I want to point to right now as well, and this is going to totally connect to your true wealth journey, is that habits are absolutely critical. That's why I go into a lot of detail and have talked a lot over the years about things like automating your investments so that you've actually automated a good habit because habits are extremely powerful things. It's what we just sort of do. We all get stuck in habits and patterns. We all do. For some reason, it seems to be part of our just makeup and part of the way we live our lives. So at the end of the day, if you can get your habits straight, the whole, there's an old saying, it, once you, you know, first you shape your habits uh, or form your habits and then your habits shape or form you. So very, you know, true. You can look at typical examples of, you know, diet and exercise or investing your money, whatever it might be, you establish those good habits and then over time they're going to shape what happens to you and, and who you become. The same goes true for quote unquote bad habits. You know, you have a bad smoking habit or you're eating a bunch of junk food or you're drinking too much or doing drugs or whatever it might be, those bad habits are going to catch up and do a lot of damage over the years. So I'm gonna get right into it here. And this is on a website, it's on a blog actually, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. I just Google searched this, but somebody did a nice sort of overview of everything. Talk about paradigms. 
talk about principles. They talk about the char- he talked about the character ethic versus the personality ethic. So character ethic is your integrity, your, humil- your humility, and your courage. And then the personality ethic is your public image, attitude, personality. He's basically saying without the character ethic and what's going on inside being you know, balanced and based on fundamentals of good character, it's really hard to have a good personality ethic or good image if it's not matching what is going on inside, if there's an incongruence there. And I think that kind of typically catches up to, to people over time. So let's get right into it. So here, these are the seven habits, and I will talk about each one. So the first one down here is being proactive. And so re- do get this book. I, I definitely think this book is worth is worth it. This is one of those books that really made a difference in my life, and I really think it can make a difference for the world and has. But the, the whole idea is very... Uh, pretty straightforward here with being proactive. So it's one thing to have plans. It's one thing to think about something and talk about something. It's a much different thing to go do it. So everybody can talk about eating healthy. Everybody can talk about uh, moving their body more and, and, and taking care of themselves. People can talk about, you know, saving money and investing, but the talk doesn't do anything. It just sort of floats off into nothingness, right? So we have to be proactive in our lives. We have to take action. Pro-action is what it is, right? So we're being pro-action. We're taking action. And so, for example, with the True Wealth Journey, you have to take that first step of signing up to automate your investments, right? That's being proactive. You have to take that step of doing the homework and reading about personal finance and investing to learn about the fundamentals, the fundamentals of dollar cost averaging, the rule of 72, the fundamentals of taxes, the fundamentals of what are the traditional investment vehicles in the world, what are the risk reward, you know, analysis of those, what is the tried and true way of investing and saving, what's compound interest, um, why is time in the market more important than time in the market, etc. So you have to do that proactive action of learning, right? When you're when you want to get healthier, you have to do that proactive action of you got to step out the door and make take that first walk. You know, take that first walk around the block that maybe becomes a jog. Get on the bike. You have to take that first action, right? So that's the first habit that we want to develop is being proactive, not just talking about things. Okay. The second habit is, I'm going to scroll down real quick. It is begin, oh, here, oh, here's, this is kind of cool. This does a, this does sort of a little glance. So proactive people, sorry, we'll go back to proactive for a second, then we'll go to the next one. So proactive people take the initiative. In short, they act instead of being acted upon. And this has to do with taking responsibility for your life and decisions. You know, I have seen that as a big pitfall for a lot of people. So yes, Things happen to people, obviously, in the world, but there has to be a certain amount of taking responsibility for our own life and decisions. It doesn't mean that that everything bad that happened to someone was their fault, but at the same, it, it isn't. I mean, we know that, you know, people get hit by a car or whatever. That's not their fault, you know. But there are a lot of things that we should take responsibility for. You know, did we did we not sign up? for that 401k at a good time? Did we, did we get enamored with get rich quick schemes? Did we not, you know, did we decide to go eat the junk food out of the shelf instead of making a salad, right? We have to have some responsibility, right? So the second part of this is focusing on what you can control. I'm a big believer in that. The typical thing is these circles where you think about, there's a small sort of circle in the middle of what you can control. There's another circle around that of things you can probably influence, probably other people you can influence them in a positive way. And there's a bunch of things in the world that you can't control. You can't control wars and and conflict in the Middle East and whatever else is going on in the world. You can't, you have no say or control on that beyond your vote and having a voice, right? So, okay, so that's that's being proactive. He says, it is our our willing permission, our consent to what happens to us that hurts us far more than what happened 
to us in the first place. It's a little bit of misspelling. Okay, talked about the circle of concern, circle of influence, key lessons. Okay, so the second habit is beginning with the end in mind, and it's as it sounds. So on your investing journey, you know, I don't know if you have an, have to an exact number in mind, but I've always found that it's, it is really helpful to set a goal. And so we talk a lot of times about, you know, Charlie Munger's concept that do everything you can to get that first 100,000 saved and invested, right? So that is beginning with the end in mind. My end state at this point, you, you know, you're, you're always in life making other goal, further goals. When you reach a goal, you know, you have to celebrate a little bit and enjoy the, the, the fruits of that. But then you're probably going to want, it's just human nature and we, we like to strive. So you probably want to set then the next goal. But the first goal would probably be, hey, I want to I want to reach that first 100,000 in my investment account, right? So that's beginning with the end in mind. And from there, you can go backwards and you can determine how much you need to save and invest every month to hit that goal. And basically, you're going to have a plan. That's the development of a plan. And we've done it, you know, we've shown it many times before. I don't know if I can find it quickly. I think I can. You know, we've shown it many times before. Easy wealth building, money Viking way. This is exactly, so here's how to get to a million, right? So a million in 20 years, you'd be saving 1,380 a month in some sort of vehicle that gets about 10% annual return at least. That's a plan, right? So that's a plan. That's beginning with the end in mind. And that's just a great way to establish, uh, you know, how to get to your goals. So there's a, you can go you can go really deep into these, and I'm not going to for the purpose of this video. I'm going to keep it kind of top level, but you know it has to do with things like developing a personal mission statement. I have done that before. It's a really nice way to think about furthering goals. Make sure that your actions don't contradict your guiding principles and defining your goals. Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so there's a lot there's a lot you can go into here. So this is just an overview. Okay, so this one's very important. This is called put first things first. This is the third habit. And I like this one a lot because our lives can be whittled away by the little minutia type things that, oh, I've got to run this errand, I have to do this, I have to do that. We have all these little things we have to do. But what ends up happening is we never establish time for the big important things. And so what he talks about is getting in the habit of getting the big important things higher in your to-do list each day. And then if the little things don't get done, then that is that is what it is. But at least you got the big rocks, the big important things done first. So this is about being disciplined and managing your time, determining important tasks, executing them, prioritizing. It's all about priorities. The reality is none of us can do it all. You know, we all have, even billionaires, they have, you know, they have a lot of helpers, but they have the same 24 hours in a day. Most of us, like 90% of us, have to sleep eight hours of those days. Um, most of us do have to take time to eat <laughs> and, and do other things. But we do have a certain amount of time that we can dedicate to putting first things first. Number four. And again, this gets into a lot of detail. You can you got, you can do a deep dive on it. Number four is think win-win. This is another really important one that has helped me so much over the years with negotiations. So any relationship you're in, there there's one theory of relationships between people is that there's always a winner and a loser. But, you know, there's another... There's another theory that I think is quite true, is that you can actually find ways and paths ahead when working with other people and dealing with other people that are actually win-win scenarios. What's good for both of you? And I've found in life that typically, whatever you can find that is good for both parties ends up being a far superior result than to, oh, I got a, I got a fast one over that one. I was the winner and you were the loser or I was the loser and you were the winner, whatever it might be. So win-win I think is really good. I think it helps you in business. So if you are a business owner, if you are thinking win-win, I think you're gonna develop much better customers and you're thinking about your customer in a win-win scenario. When you're thinking about your other business associates in win-win scenarios, I bet it helps your career trajectory in many ways. So I really do like that one, I think it's very important. 
Again, a lot you can go into here. Okay, this is another one that I found really, really helpful in life. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. This one is really about learning to listen. It's a skill that not many of us are good at. And I would say most of us aren't good at it. We have this reaction, maybe it's an ego thing, of like really having to always just respond and defend and get our voice heard. And it's kind of our little ego voice just sort of like, hear me, hear me, you know, do, do you see me? But if you notice the most powerful and wise people, they probably talk less. They actually are just listening. They're taking in all the information because they're seeking to understand the other person before they're being understood. Now, it is important that you have a voice as well and we both are understood, but this is another one that I really think can help your personal relationships and your professional relationships and really lead to more wealth. I just think it really does. There was a cool exercise when I took the class where you would actually have a thing called a talking stick. And so when you were holding the stick, it was your turn to talk and everyone else would listen. And then when that physical object was handed back over and held by someone else, it was their turn to talk. It was actually a really neat idea. And I have my talking stick somewhere. I should have brought it out. But anyway, okay, so that's number five. Number six, let's go to six here. Synergizing. The synergizing habit emphasizes the power of collaboration. It encourages you to look for opportunities to collaborate to create outcomes greater than the sum of your parts. This is really important too. I think this is a realization that none of us can really do everything alone. We are social creatures. We evolved in tribes and in clans. And it's for that way for a reason. It's the best way we can survive. Very few of us can survive totally alone without any assistance from society or others. And that's a good thing. It means we're all interdependent and we are helping each other. So that, that's what that one's about. And I think that one definitely leads to better wealth outcomes. And number, let's see, seven. Okay, seven is another one I want to talk about, which and this is the last one. Very important, sharpening the saw. We can't just work, work, work all the time. It basically leads to burnout. So we have to take time to heal. We have to take time to reflect. We have to take time to learn and kind of go within a little bit. And that's what this one is about. And again, I think that leads to better health outcomes, better financial decisions, better investment decisions, etc. So sharpening the saw, you can't just keep sawing all the time. The saw blade wears out. You got to take a break sometimes and sharpen it. So anyway, with all that said, I hope this helps you. This is uh, my kind of recap of the seven habits of highly effective people in terms of wealth building and true, a life of true wealth. Please like, subscribe, please leave a comment, and I'll see you guys all on the next one.